A very good morning to you. And the first thing to say to you this morning is Happy New Year. I'm very impressed at how bright-eyed and bushy-tailed you're all looking. And how many of you there are, to be honest. <laughs> oh, Janet's waving. We're waving back. The Lord be with you. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Um. Nick, is there any way we can make that, because it's a little box at the moment, is there any way we can make it a bit of a bigger... I can see now. <laughs> a prayer for the beginning of the year. Eternal Lord God, we give you thanks for bringing us through the changes of time to the beginning of another year. Forgive us the wrong we have done in the year that is past and help us to spend the rest of our days to your honour and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's lovely that we've got Peter with us here this morning on the first day of the new year. And we're going to begin by singing In the Bleak Midwinter.
hear the words of the angel to Joseph. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Therefore, let us seek the forgiveness of God through Jesus, the Saviour of the world. Lord of grace and truth, we confess our unworthiness to stand in your presence as your children. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The Virgin Mary accepted your call to be the mother of Jesus. Forgive our disobedience to your call. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. Your Son, our Saviour, was born in poverty in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The shepherds left their flocks to go to Bethlehem. Forgive our self-interest and lack of vision. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The Magi followed the star to find Jesus the King. Forgive our reluctance to seek you. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. We stand to say together, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. The collect for today's Sunday, which is the circumcision of Jesus. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was circumcised in obedience to the law for our sake, and given the name that is above every name, give us grace faithfully to bear his name, to worship him in the freedom of the Spirit, and to proclaim him as the saviour of the world, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you please be seated? As we read together Psalm 8. O Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised, out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what is man? that you should be mindful of him, the son of man, that you should seek him out. You have made him little lower than the angels and crowned him with glory and honour. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. 
Um, remain seated for our first reading. Thank you, Lynn. The New Testament reading is from Galatians chapter, seven, uh, chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. Sons and daughters of God. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons and daughters, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who called out, calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Would you please stand? We're now going to sing the hymn, How Deep the Father's Love for Me. Alleluia, alleluia. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to Christ our Saviour. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, 
Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Now I speak in the name of the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please be seated? Luke tells us, that on the eighth day after his birth, Mary and Joseph took their newborn son to be circumcised, as was and still is the requirement for Jewish males. During the liturgy of circumcision, the baby boy is named. That day long ago in ancient Palestine, the moil, the specially trained rabbi who performs the ritual of circumcision, said something like, name this child to which Mary and Joseph responded, Jesus. And there it was, he was named. Throughout the ancient Near East, it's always been thought that names, that names carried with them a description of the person or thing named. People chose names for their children very carefully because the name should describe some aspect of the child's character or identity. A good name would say something about who the parents hoped and prayed their child would become. Jesus is a version of Joshua, which in Hebrew means Yahweh is salvation, Yahweh delivers, or Yahweh rescues. The angel of the Lord had come to Mary and told her she would have a son and would name him Jesus. So God had ordained that this child would be known as God's salvation, God's deliverer, or God's rescuer. But there's something even more powerful about giving that name to this child. After all, Jesus was not just the firstborn child of Joseph the carpenter and Mary of Nazareth. He was the incarnation of God, God among us, the God of all creation, as human as any of us. One of the tenets of Judaism is that the name of God cannot be said or written by humans. People can't possibly know the character or the true identity of God, so they can't possibly name God. Jews would write God's name with asterisks, where the vowels were supposed to go. The world into which Jesus was born knew only a God who was so distant from the people, so apart, so otherworldly, that God's name could not even be spoken. This was the same God who spoke with Moses from a burning bush and warned him not to look at God or else Moses would die. Elijah tried to glimpse this same God in gale force winds and earthquakes and fire, but could only find God in the still, small voice. This was the same God about whom the prophet Ezra said that people could not lift their faces heavenward because they were not worthy to be seen by God. No wonder the coming ministry of this little child would be such a challenge and such a threat to the Jewish authorities. Jesus, God's salvation, brought not only a name to God, but a face as well. 
Suddenly people could not only speak about God, but they could also speak to God and could see God's face as they did so. Look at the Old Testament stories, full of wonder and might of God, but also full of God's wrath against humanity. All God ever asked of humankind was to love God with all their hearts, their minds, their souls and their strength, and to follow some fairly straightforward commandments. But the people could never seem to accomplish this seemingly simple task. Instead, they created false gods and they break every commandment given to them. God tried everything to get their attention. Banishment, flood, fire, brimstone, enslavement and freedom from slavery. God sent prophet after prophet to the people to tell them what their mistakes had been and to try to return them to God's path. But nothing worked until finally God decided to try a new way. As St Paul told us in this morning's reading from the letter to Galatians, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. And because you are children, God sent out the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. God decided to approach humans in an entirely different way, as one of us. And from that day on, we occupied a different place in God's created order. In the fullness of time, God sent a baby named Jesus, God's salvation, to take us from being fearful subjects of an angry ruler to being children of the living God. Jesus came into the world to redeem us from slavery to sin and to show us the face of a loving God. Jesus brought us close to God in a way that had never been experienced before. He did something that could never have been accomplished by a prophet or a teacher or a great religious leader. <clears throat> My voice is going. This is a story about Harry. Harry wanted to be in the Christmas play at his school, but Harry wasn't the top student in his class and seemed to have a lot of problems. And the directors of the children's play didn't want to hurt Harry's feelings, but they were worried about whether he could handle having a part they finally decided to give him the part of the innkeeper. All he had to say was, I'm sorry, there's no room in the inn. The day of the performance came and the hall was packed. The time came for Harry's great moment where Mary and Joseph came and knocked on the inn door. The whole constructed village of Bethlehem shook as Harry tried desperately to open the cardboard door to the inn, which was stuck. Finally, after much pulling and shaking, Harry got the door open and the pitiful young couple were standing there. Harry, by now, was a little flustered, but with a little coaching, he blurted out the words, I'm sorry, all the, world, all the rooms are full and there's no room for you here. The couple turned sorrowfully away and began to walk off stage when suddenly the door of the inn swung open again and Harry ran up to the couple and said in a loud voice so that everyone could hear, wait a minute, come back, you can have my room. It was a great addition to the play, even though it wasn't in the script. 
The world wasn't interested enough to provide a room for the Saviour. But we don't have to follow the script either. We can give him room, our room, the room of our hearts. Give him room to live in us. Jesus says to us, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. So as we begin a new year, maybe one of our resolutions should be to be a bit more like Harry and to go off script. Give Jesus our room and to love God with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our souls, and with all our strength. Amen. Would you please stand? Let us profess the faith of the church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. But he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Would you please be seated for our time of prayer? Thank you, Diana. Let us pray to Abba, Father. Father, as we look back over the past year and forward into the new year, help us to know that at all times you are present with us and that we are your children. Help us to trust you, whatever our circumstances, and to listen for your guidance in our daily lives. And as the shepherds proclaimed the good news of Jesus' birth, may we be bearers of that good news throughout the coming year to all we meet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all people living in the shadow of war, especially those in Ukraine, but also those in many other parts of the world. Give them courage and hope and bring peace 
and a resolution to the conflict. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those struggling to find enough food to eat, fuel to provide warmth, and shelter or security. And help all those who work in many ways to relieve these situations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those we know who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, and for those who care for them. We especially pray for Janet's mum, Jeanette, for Brian and Jean, for Carol and Mick. And in a moment's <coughs> silence, we bring to you those known to us individually. We pray for those who have died and ask you to comfort their families and their friends. Lord, in your mercy, hear I pray. And on this Sunday, as we mark the naming and circumcision of Jesus, help us to remember that God gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Diana. Would you please stand? In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another a sign of peace. And to remain standing and sing the hymn, What Child Is This?
please be seated. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body given for you all. When the meal was ended, Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and the whole world. Send your spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Blood of Christ, keep you at the top.
Eternal God, whose incarnate Son was given the name of Saviour, grant that we who have shared in this sacrament of our salvation may live out our years in the power of the name above all other names, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Notices. Surprising number for the week after New Year. Tuesday. Prayer and a pint at uh, Two Doves in Oakley Road. This is the one that was due to happen in December and got moved. But it would be lovely to see some of you there for um, a bit of a theological discussion and then a bit of a social. Being social, if you're still in the social mood, Coffee and chat in the North Room at 10.30 on Thursday. Home group at the Vicarage, I'm assuming, is still going ahead. And next Sunday, we've got worship here with baptism. 
Um, if you are on the rotor, there are new rotors at the back of church. If you could pick them up, that would be very helpful. And also, if there are still a lot of Christmas cards on the table in the porch, if you have a look and see if there are any for you, if there aren't and you see someone and think, oh, I'll be seeing them during the week, that would be really helpful if you could pick them up and take them away for us. And I've just done that one. So I won't do that again. It's just to remind you. We're going to stand now and sing at the name of Jesus. Two things I forgot to mention, um, coffee in the south room after the service. If you haven't had enough biscuits and mince pies and stuff, then come and join us for coffee and a bit of a chat afterwards. Also, I've got a bit confused. Over Christmas, we were all going out the back door. So when Carol said to me, shall we open the side door? I went, no, that's all right. So we're actually leaving that way this morning because that door's now not open. <laughs> it is open. Oh, it is open. It is open. I'll run over and open it then. So actually, yes, you can go out the back door. Oh, dear. You will name him Jesus, save his people from their sins. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High. He will be called Emmanuel, God with us. The love of God, Lord Jesus, draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service, and the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
be with you and with all whom you love, now and always. Amen. Lovely to see you all here this morning. Thank you, Peter. It's been lovely having you with us. To go in peace and proclaim the word made flesh. Glory, thanks and praise to God. Bye to all you at home.